Hello everyone and welcome to Art Smart. Today we're going to look at Michelangelo's masterpiece, The Creation of Adam. This is one of several scenes that are depicted on the Sistine Chapel, and the Sistine Chapel is a masterpiece in and of itself and deserves its own video. However, we're going to center in on The Creation of Adam, which is probably the most famous of the various scenes that are found on the Sistine Chapel. Now, uh, Probably the most famous aspect of the picture is the hand to God portion in the middle, where you see Adam and God reaching out to uh, meet their hands together, and God is giving life to man. It's a beautiful symbolic image, and it's certainly one that has resonated over time. You see many, many uh, duplications of this work, and most of them are kind of centered in on the hands and are celebrating the hands coming together. However, I want to point out a few other aspects of the painting today that I think are equally interesting and also have a lot to say about man and uh, the relationship that man has with God. If you look at Adam, who is lounging in the bottom left corner, he uh, is literally lounging here. There are two separate interpretations that uh, I have read and uh, art historians have kind of debated over time, and you can pick which one you think is uh, the correct interpretation. Adam could either be very kind of languid there because he does not yet have uh, God giving him that real power of life, the spiritual power of life to give him energy. And so it could be interpreted that he's kind of laying there without energy because God has yet to give it to him. Another interpretation is simply that Adam is in sin and he's kind of lazy and he is not reaching out to God nearly as much as God is reaching out to him. As God the Father is reaching out, extending, you know, giving all kinds of power trying to reach out to Adam while Adam is half-heartedly putting his hand out to God. And that is also a interpretation that talks about the sinfulness of man and the lack of devotion we have to God. Personally, I like the second interpretation. However, that's not necessarily due to specific scholarship. It's just the interpretation that means something to me. So choose as you will. Uh, you'll also notice that there is a barren landscape around Adam, uh, symbolizing the fact that uh, Adam really is the the prime and the uh, center focus of God's energies, that God is really putting all of his attention and focus on man. If you look over where God is in the symbolic heaven, you'll see that it's a fine drapery that is kind of elegantly uh, flowing around, and you see all kinds of cherubs and angels hanging out with God and looking excitedly at what God is doing as he is uh, giving life to man. So if you look at that interpretation of the barrenness of earth and the um, just epic beauty of heaven, it definitely states something about how God looks at us, that we are his number one focus and that God is putting almost all of his energies into us. Now, of course, God puts energy into the rest of the world too, but it definitely symbolizes here that man has a special place in creation. I also want to point out that there is incredible structure that has been painted onto the ceiling. Uh, your eye is going to be tricked into thinking that lots of the uh, the columns that you see and a lot of the detail is actually architectural, but actually the vast majority of what you're seeing up on the ceiling is uh, just a visual trick. He makes it look like there is all kinds of structure on the ceiling when actually that was all painted in. It was a fantastic visual trick that he did to make the rest of the uh, building, which was very um, structural, kind of match the ceiling, or I should say the ceiling matching the rest of the structure, where everything kind of looks like it's uh, kind of come together in a very structured form, even though it is a very flat ceiling. I also want to point out that along the sides of the image, you're going to see uh, various figures. Uh, he put in prophets, he put in sibyls, he also put in ignudi, and uh, basically these different uh, characters that are along the side have different meanings. Obviously, uh, disciples and prophets that are along the side are calling out to God and are uh, talking about God's promises. However, he also put in some pagan symbols to show that basically all of creation is reaching out to God and all of creation has a soul that wants to touch God. And so he put in different types of symbols, even symbols that are not necessarily uh, specifically Christian, which I think uh, is definitely interesting. Last but not least, I want to point out all 
all the different cracks that are in the ceiling. Now, these cracks obviously were not meant to be there, and so they're not part of the painting proper. However, as is the case with many works of art, over the course of time, damage that has been done to the piece kind of becomes part of the piece and uh, speaks to its uh, beauty. I actually like these cracks as they almost seem to symbolize the uh, the broken connection that we have to God because of sin. It almost represents to a degree uh, the fact that we're imperfect now and that our relationship with God really has to be saved by God the Father sending God the Son. So I think the cracks themselves are quite beautiful and make the work even more powerful. So next time you look at the creation of Adam, I hope you enjoy it as a uh, individual piece, as part of a larger piece of the Sistine Chapel. But I also hope that you take your eyes off of the hands touching just for a moment to see all the other beautiful things that he put into this very powerful and epic painting. Have a great day and make sure you continue to art smart.